For this week's Niche of the Week video, we are going with online fitness coaches. Now, for those of you who don't know, every week I pick one niche in the lead gen industry and I show you how to implement an in-depth Facebook ad strategy. And it's actually one that I would present to you if you were my client. Now, we're going to go over things like funnel creation, softwares you may need to execute the funnel, audience targeting, ad creative, all the above, right? And last but certainly not least, we're going to go inside the ads manager and actually build this thing out. Now, keep in mind, there are many different strategies when it comes to marketing on Facebook. Now, this is just one that I would go with, that I have confidence in, that I've seen work. So with that said, if you're an online fitness coach, you're in luck. This week is your week, so let's dive right in. So let's start off by looking at the funnel outline. I think this is a very good place to start because whoever's behind the ads, it's important for you to understand the bigger picture and understand the customer's journey. Now, you can download your own copy of this. There's a link in the description below this video. And if you plan on implementing this strategy, I highly recommend it. Starting here at top of funnel and our fill the bucket strategy, that's just the name I gave it. I'm sure there's other cooler names than that, but I went with fill the bucket strategy. So top funnel, free downloads. If you're an online fitness coach, I'm sure you have some sort of freebie to offer, right? Free four week program, free nutritional checklist, whatever it may be. We're, that's what we're going to start off advertising. And the goal is, again, to get as many people as possible to download this freebie. We want to fill this bucket up as much as we can, right? And we want to start working these people down our funnel. So the goal is not purchases. That's not our mindset here. That's not our goal at top of funnel. We just simply want to test different audiences, find out who's actually really interested in us and our service, and get people to download our freebie. So just to recap what I have written here, as I mentioned, fill the retargeting bucket as much as we can, find out which audience is actually interested. And this will make more sense to you as we jump into the ads manager and actually build it out for you, for you to see. And like I mentioned, the goal is not purchase. If we get some great right now, our mission is to test different audiences and see what sticks. And some, I have a sticky note here for each level of the funnel. So fa Facebook campaign objective, we're going to do lead forms. And again, I'll be showing you how to set that up inside the ads manager. And you can use softwares like Zapier, 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 however you call it. Uh, you can use Zapier to set up your automations. In other words, when someone fills out your lead form, Zapier will automatically send that download or whatever you may have to the person who filled out the form. And then this is also a very, very big chance for you to start adding people to an email list. Now, if you don't have email marketing in place, I highly recommend it. It's a really good way, especially for this, this niche. It's a really good way to keep these leads top of mind, to keep nurturing them throughout the process. 100% of your budget is going to be used here in the first four days because we need to get some people in the door, right? So 100% of your budget is going to be here. And after four days, we're going to bump it down to just 70% of your budget because that's obviously when we're gonna launch our middle of funnel. Now, moving into our middle of funnel here. So in our middle of funnel, what's gonna happen is we're going to use a webinar software, right? Now, I don't know if this really depends on you and how comfortable you are in front of the, uh, the camera, but what I would recommend is we use a webinar software such as Webinar Jam or Stealth Seminar, and we can have an automated system set up where at the top of every hour, your recorded webinar about you talking about your program, showing examples, things like that, plays at the top of every hour, giving people the chance to purchase or book a call, whatever your sales process may be. After they watch the webinar, they can do that. Now, I think this is a really effective way to kind of humanize your brand and get people even more knowledgeable about your program, right? Because think about this, people who download the freebie and the people who actually sit through your webinar they're warm, they're on fire, right? They're close to purchasing, close to converting. And I think the beautiful thing about this, like I mentioned, is it can really, it can be automated, right? And this is something that can just run evergreen in the background all the time. So I like the webinar strategy here. This is what I would go with, with middle of funnel. Now, if you're not comfortable with webinars, I think um, a good thing you could do is maybe you could book a call, right? You can have people just directly book a call with you who downloaded the freebie. So that's an, obviously another option as well. But for this strategy that I'm showing today, I'm sticking with the recorded webinar approach. So to recap here, the goal, retarget people who showed interest in your top of funnel. In other words, people who downloaded the freebie. We're gonna nurture these leads by getting them to sign up to watch a top of the hour recorded webinar on the topic related to your program or course that you're trying to sell. And after the video, people will have the options to book or purchase, like I mentioned. 
And I mentioned webinar and um, and stealth seminar. Here they are right here. You can do some research on that. And I'm sure there's so many other softwares that you could use. These are a couple that I know work well. So you can check them out as well. And let's go back here to our funnel. So that's that. And again, after four days, we're gonna turn this thing on and we're gonna have 20% of our budget set here to start retargeting. And that's really what's gonna be going on at that level. And just to back up a little bit, I know I said Zapier appeared. That is inside here. For those of you who aren't familiar, this top of funnel for the people who download our freebie, it's it's very, very simple. So for example, connect this app. We want to connect Facebook lead forms, Facebook lead ads to emails by Zapier right there. And you just start plug and playing, right? You start picking picking the necessary things and you click try it, edit it. It's really straightforward to do. So that is Zapier, by the way, for the top of funnel automations. All right, so we got top funnel free breeze. We got middle of funnel, uh, recorded webinars, automation, sign up at the top of every hour. We're retargeting the people who downloaded our freebies. We're gonna see really how interested they really are, see if they sit through our webinar. Now, let's move to bottom of funnel. So the bottom of funnel, <clears throat> I have two objectives here. I, I'm gonna, for this scenario, I wanna run, starting out, I wanna test do two different campaign objective, which is conversions, which is sending them to a landing page to purchase or book a call, again, whatever your, whatever your sales process is. And then the other one being Messenger, because if you go and watch, I did a video about Messenger campaigns and a good time to use them is obviously bottom of funnel. This gives you a chance to talk to this person who downloaded your freebie, who sat through your webinar and still hasn't purchased, let's give them a chance to speak to us directly through Messenger ads, right? Maybe you can answer their questions. Maybe you can turn them into a customer. So I wanna test two different campaign objectives there. And again, at this point, they've been through our funnel. We want sales. And think, think there's a reason why they haven't converted yet. And that's where we get to test at this point. And in my opinion, this is where you get to throw deals, different offers, different discounts, things like that, to get these people who have yet to convert, who have yet to purchase, let's get them on the other side right here. Maybe we test different price points and things like that. So that's what's gonna go on at the bottom of the funnel. Our mission is sales at this point. We're gonna be really pushy, we're gonna get some sales. Uh, our notes for this level of the funnel, we're gonna do conversions in Messenger, as I mentioned. Again, for landing pages, recommend go high level for everything. Uh, after a week, after seven days, we want to launch this campaign and use just 10% of our budget. It's not a huge audience we're going after. So 10% of your budget works perfectly. And I, I made the note about messenger ads. It's a really good way to get personal with these leads and answer the questions they may have. And now you can see here at the bottom, I have top to bottom retargeting. It's always good practice to have some sort of retargeting going on in the background. It can be literally like $2 a day. That's it, right? And uh, we're just trying to get the people who fell through the crack. So people who opened the lead form but didn't didn't submit it, right? They opened it for some reason. Let's go find out why. Let's see if we can pick them back up. People who maybe visited the, the book now page or purchase now page in the bottom of the funnel but didn't, didn't go through with the purchase. Let's retarget them again. And then maybe people who signed up to join the webinar but never participated. So just grabbing those people and literally $2 a day, 2 to $4 a day is perfect for this type of retargeting campaign. And some notes here, again, campaign varies. You want to create campaigns that are pretty specific to the people you're retargeting, right? So, for example, maybe we're just retargeting people from the top of funnel who opened the form. Maybe, we're, maybe we retarget them with a... Uh, another type of freebie with a different angle, with different messaging. The people who did not join the webinar say, hey, here's another chance to join our webinar. Don't forget, right? So just having those different angles and messages in place and being really specific on who you're retargeting will really help a lot. Um, and again, like I said, 2 to $4 a day is perfect. Launch once all campaigns above are launched, right? So this will be launched about a week later. Right. So that is a bird's eye view of the Facebook ad strategy that we are about to go in and implement. 
Um, again, this is this is our fill the bucket strategy. I think it's very effective. And be sure if you plan to implement this, be sure to download your own copy by clicking on the link in the description below this video. So with that, now let's dive in to the ads manager and start talking about different audiences. Hey, real quick, before you dive into the rest of the video, my name is Michael Curry. I'm the owner of l &M Digital, where we create, launch, and manage Facebook ads for companies across the world. Now, if you're looking for very simple, straightforward how-to videos regarding Facebook ads, you've came to the right place. Also, be on the lookout for our weekly niche of the week video where I pick one niche, and I dive in, I create a top to bottom funnel and actually show you how to create and implement that inside the Facebook Ads Manager. Now, if all that sounds really cool to you, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And with that said, enjoy the rest of the video. Here we are inside the Facebook Ads Manager. And what we're going to do now is we're going to pre-create our target audience. And you'll hear me say it all the time. When it comes to Facebook Ads, the most important thing is your target audience. So it's really important for you to take the time to understand your offer, do some research and know who you're going to be serving best. So let's go to the audience tab here. Now, when you get here, if you've never pre if you've never created a saved audience before, this is what your screen will look like. You're going to go and create a saved audience. Now let's put ourselves in the position of an online fitness coach. And let's say that you have an offer. Let's say that you have a six week program for postpartum women, right? Obviously I'm sure your offer may be more specific, but our target audience is mainly, we have an offer that serves women who just went through pregnancy, who are looking to get back in a good routine, workout routine, things like that. So that's who we're going to use in this example. So let's start off here. What you're going to do is obviously give your target audience a name, audience one. And what you want to do is what you're going to see me do is I'm going to create probably about three different audiences, three to four different audiences. And I think it's important for you to create a variety of your target audiences because you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, right? You always hear those people say like, oh, I tried Facebook ads and it didn't work. It didn't work. Well, they probably didn't test their audience the right way. They probably created one audience, loaded it up with all these detailed targetings and it didn't work, right? So there's definitely a way to go in about testing your target audience, which I'm gonna show you. So starting with audience one here. So again, targeting postpartum women, let's say the age you wanna stick with is between 20 and 38. We'll say that, like I said, I'm not sure I don't have a postpartum workout program but we're just going with that for the example. So we'll say 20 to 38 in this example. Now what you want to do is scroll down in locations, people living in this location, ages 20 through 38. You want to go with women and, Eng and I always put English, US. And keep in mind up here, this drop down arrow, I want to do people living in the US. So I'm, I have an online program I can sell, I can serve people nationwide. So always make sure you check this drop down arrow here. And then for detailed targeting, targeting for audience number one, I may do, obviously, I want people who just had kids. So I'm going to go to browse demographics, parents, all parents. Let's do new parents. Right, but also, you know what? I wanna give myself some wiggle room. I may do parents with toddlers as well, right? So I think that would be a good approach that I would do. So now that we have our demographics, let's think of some interest that these women may fall into that will fit our, pro fit our offer. So let's see, women 20, 38, I have a postpartum program. I want, this may be fitting for women who may be interested in CrossFit. Let's try that. Okay. Let's do CrossFit fitness. Okay. So now recapping here, 20 to 38 year old women who just are new parents or with toddlers who are interested in CrossFit. It gives me about an eight to $9 million, eight to 9 million audience size. I'm comfortable with that. I think that's a pretty good number. It's large. It's, it's good. I like that. The last thing you want is something under like a hundred thousand, right? That's, that gets a little too narrow for me. So this is good, especially nationwide. 
So this may be audience one for me. And like I said, it's very tempting to go in here and load up on all these different different detail targeting that you think your ideal customer would fall into, right? But for testing purposes, you don't want to do that because when you'll see, I'm going to create three different audiences and, they, and each of them are going to be the same age, same type of demographics, but have a different interest. So the reason I'm doing that is so whenever I'm testing these audiences, I'll know which audience is performing best and why, right? I'll be able to say, okay, well, it looks like audience one actually performed best because of this interest right here. And I can work off that interest, right? So keep it to a minimum two max, in my opinion, two max interests. But for this case, I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to target pregnant women who are interested in CrossFit training. All right, that's my audience one. So let's create another one. We're going to go to saved audience. It's going to be audience two. Same age, people living in the U.S., ages 20 to 38. I want to keep that variable the same. So again, we're testing the audience. We're seeing which interests in which interest drives us the best quality lead. So targeting women who speak English. Now detail targeting again, we're gonna stick with the demographics of new parents and parents with toddlers, because that's what my product serves. That's who I serve best with my product. And an interest I might go with here. So I did CrossFit for audience one, I may do like a running club, see if there's something like that. Okay, so it looks like I have a running club, people interested in running club here. So I might go with that one. And I can always hit the suggest button here. This is something you could you could do as well to give you uh, some more options, right? Jogging, 5K run, 10K run, physical exercise is an obvious one that I may be using in the next example. Uh, so this gives you an idea of the different type of interests you could use. For now, I'm gonna stick with running club. Okay. And that gives me a six to seven audience size. I like that size. That's good for me. If I saw something like if I'm doing a detail targeting like this and I saw something in like the 30 to 40 million, that may be a little too big for me. I might get more specific, but this is comfortable. I'm comfortable with this. So let's create this saved audience. Let's do one more. Well, actually two, but one more detailed saved audience, audience two, I mean, audience three here. People living in the U.S., women ages 20 to 38. Let's speak English. And for this detailed targeting, again, a little repetitive here, but we're going to go with parents, new parents, and toddlers. Okay. Now for this interest, again, we can really generic here and go physical fitness this be more of a broader audience i'm sure there's that size there right that's that's pretty large okay so we're gonna go with physical fitness we'll leave it here and create this audience number three now what i like to do is I always like to include a blanket audience and what that is is no detail targeting whatsoever now, obviously you're gonna have the same age targeting women but always good i like to do this because it just gives facebook the chance it's like me saying here facebook here's a super broad audience let's see how smart you are with it right so just give facebook a little bit of playing room with this uh with this broad audience here so again i'm gonna keep this variable the same though because it wouldn't make sense to target a 65 year old woman with my offer we're doing 38 not 30. and no detail targeting whatsoever super broad and look at that size that's that's expected like i said if i'm not doing any detail targeting i'm okay with this size so there we go i have three audiences here audience one two and three with a blanket audience what i just showed you is how to pre-create your audience inside the audience tab of the ads manager. And like I said, it's really important for you to do your research, understand your offer, understand who it's gonna serve best and go inside the audience tab and just cr create them out like this. Play around, search different interests, 
look at different profiles, see what, see what pages they like, dive in and really take your time on doing the research because this is the foundation of your whole Facebook ad strategy, your whole campaign efforts right here. So now that we have this pre-created, let's talk about ad creatives, right? So we have our Facebook ad strategy. We understand that. We did our research. We have our audience. We built them out inside the ads manager. Check, check. Now let's talk about the ads. How are we going to make these, these ads? What should they look like? Well, let's dive into that next. So where to start with the ad creative, right? So it's, listen, you don't have to be some sort of graphic design expert or super tech savvy person to create some Facebook ads. It's really not that advanced. It's actually a lot easier than you think. So, and it's kind of fun. So first things first, what I would do is do a little research, find out what my competitors are doing. So I'm going to hop on over to Facebook ads library, which is a, which is a very, very helpful feature that Facebook has that I really love. I use it all the time to get inspiration. So what I might do is fitness coach. Let's see what kind of ads out there that are, that are out there that are running for fitness coaches, just to get some inspiration, get some idea of what I'm competing against and what I could make. So let's see here. Okay. See that. See, I've got some videos. I, now, I will say from my past experience, something that I've noticed that works really well is when you show your face on the ad. So I like this approach here. Very clean, very straightforward, simple. And another one here. So now let's do, do something like postpartum workout. And let's see if there's an ad out there that's literally my offer. So let's see what we got. Okay, let's see. Eight week level one strength and fitness. And again, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the ad creative itself. Looks like we got a carousel here. Here's another one. Okay. This is going to catch a, a postpartum woman's eye right here for sure. A video. Click. Okay. Interesting. Got it. So oh, here's a, here's a great one right here. Pregnant and postpartum athletes. That's, that's pretty ideal there. I like that. So, okay, so we got the idea, right? I head over to Facebook ads, uh, Facebook ads library, get your, uh, get your inspiration there. And then what you want to do, the best 12 bucks you'll ever spend a month is hop on over to Canva. So here in Canva, this is literally all you need to create Facebook ads. So what I would do is create a new design, size it as 1080, 1080, that's the square dimension. And I would hop on over to the design tab here and I would type in literally fitness coach. And let's just see some of the templates they have for me already. Now, obviously we're going to modify and edit it a little bit to, uh, to make it make sense for us. So say I'm going through and let's see which one is catching my eye. Maybe I do something with this one. And obviously you want to put your brand's colors, things like that. You would rename it. Maybe the name of your offer is my new mommy, mommy workout, workout program, something like that, right? Maybe that's the name of your offer. I just kind of came up with that. But anyways, you would put that around here. Uh, let's see, you could change these photos out, upload one. Maybe put your pic. Maybe put your picture here, right? A nice professional photo of yourself here, and then maybe a pregnant woman, which you can, or like a mom with their child. So you could do. Where am I? What am I looking at here? Let's go photos. Pregnant, and you could pick one, right? So maybe you do. I'm gonna go with this one right here you drag it boom drop okay and then again pregnant here you put your put your offer here your mommy six week program put your name and i'm literally just making this up 
as we go. So put your name there. Regain your confidence. I can spell. Regain your confidence with my program. Whatever, right? You get creative. It's really fun, actually. And um, and so then that could literally be your ad. Obviously, get more creative. Add photos of you. You can play around on Canva and just check out all the different templates they have. Like this one's pretty neat, right? It has some animations. You don't have to get super crazy with it. You would be surprised at some of the ads that we've ran in the past. The simple, the more simple it is, the better it's performed. It's crazy. There's ads that I, we've launched where it's like, that one's going to kill it. And actually it doesn't, right? The one that we didn't think was going to kill it, kills it. So hop over to Canva, get your inspiration from the ads library, library. hop over to Canva, create your ad. Very straightforward, very simple. And as far as whenever you download them, so what you want to do here, this is important to understand as well, hit the resize button. I already have it because I've done it so much. I already have the dimensions inside Canva for the different Facebook placements, 1200 by 628, 1152 by 2048, that resize button. And now what you'll have to do is you have to move it around a little bit to make it make sense for each placement, right? So here we are in the, this would be like the stories, the reels type. So I may move that, move it around a little bit, put that there. And then that makes it look a little bit cleaner, right? And then if I hop over to, and then if I hop over to, I believe this one, right? This is desktop view. So, okay, I'm gonna have to kind of stretch this out a little bit. So I might bring this over here, this over here, drag this over here, make that bigger. Do name. Here we go. Right. So now that looks clean on a desktop, uh, desktop placement. So got my stories, reels, desktop, and then of course our mobile newsfeed dimensions. So once I do that, then I'm just going to download them. Uh, PNG is fine. And then there you go. Then you'll just upload them to the Facebook ads manager, which we're about to do now. It's, it's again, it's really, you don't have to be some tech savvy person. It's very straightforward, very easy and pretty fun. So that's how we're going to create our ad. That's how you get your inspiration. So now let's hop into the ads manager again. And now let's build out this campaign top to bottom, right? We got our strategy, we got audiences, we got our ad creative. Let's build this thing and let's launch it. All right, so here we are back in the ads manager and we are going to build out our campaign, the final step. So here we go, create, and we're doing our top funnel, which is our freebie, right? We want a free download. We're gonna do a lead form here. So we want the instant forms, perfect, hit continue. And again, we're gonna refer back to our outline, funnel outline here, we're right here, top of funnel, free downloads, Facebook campaign objective lead form. So I'll just name it TOF. And right here, what you're going to go through is you're not going to touch any of this really just leave it as is and hop on over to the ad set level. So now inside of our top of funnel campaign, where this is where we're going to add our audiences that we created, right? So each ad set is going to be their own audience because again, we're testing, right? So audience one will be here. It's going to be an instant form. That's what it's going to be an instant form. You're going to click your Facebook page. We're not going to do dynamic creative. Now, now setting our budget here. So, so say we want to spend $20 a day per ad set. So we'll just leave it for this example. We'll leave it at $20 a day. Start date. You don't really have to touch it unless you have a scheduled start date. You want to launch it. Now what you can do here again, like I told you what I really love doing, why I like to pre-create them is I can just click and go. I already did the nitty gritty work. I added my, I mapped out my audiences. I know what I'm targeting. And then I'm going to go with advantage plus placement. What this is, is you're literally telling, you're giving Facebook the control to say, Hey, post my ad wherever you see 
it work best, right? Like you can do manual placement, which I don't recommend. I like to give Facebook the control in this sense, which is why whenever we're on Canva creating our ad, I have us download it all at the correct sizes. But manual placement, you can just have it run on the newsfeed if that's what you prefer. But again, I stick with the automatic placements in this case. And you'll see on the right hand side here, it's going to spit some numbers. This is just an estimate. You don't live and die by this. It gives you a general idea of what to expect. But again, it's never really accurate, to be honest with you. So, okay, so there we go. That is audience one. Now we're going to do a quick duplicate here. And we're going to rename this audience two. Everything should be the same. We're going to run $20 here. But this is going to be audience two instead. Okay, advanced placement, good to go. Let's do another duplicate. All right, here we go. We're gonna rename this audience three. Everything is the same, except we wanna change this to audience three. All right, let's do one more duplicate and this is gonna be our blanket audience. So I like to blanket, go down here to the audiences and boom, click blanket. Here we go. And you may, and I will give you a heads up, if you get these arrows, these scary little yellow triangles, ignore them, right? So watch what, what this is, is really is Facebook saying, hey, give me more money, because watch what happens whenever I do this. Oh, okay, now it's happy, right? So don't really, don't freak out when you see this. It's really, it's pointless. So there we go. We added our audiences. Our top of funnel campaign is built out. Now we just got to go inside each audience ad set and add the ad. So here we are in audience one. Obviously select your Instagram page. We'll say, add. okay. And we're scrolling down keep this multi advertising ad uncheck that not a very good feature that Facebook ad I don't like it so don't so make sure you uncheck that and now let's add our ad creative that we made so I'm going to can this that's just the one they gave us as we're going to add an image I am going to drag the ones I made and start here upload it and it, you'll get this option so what I want to do is replace this with, I believe that was the square one, was it? Yeah, replace it, that one looks good. We need to replace this with the desktop one because we are doing automatic placement. We're letting Facebook place it wherever, so we need to make sure we have, it looks clean on all different placements. Click next, standard enhancement. This really doesn't make a difference. I just click done, It's it doesn't affect anything at all. So here we go, that's our ad. And here you write the copy, whatever your copy may be, and it'll, you'll see it'll pre, it'll populate on the right hand side. So buy my program. Don't obviously don't write that. Make make your copy more intriguing. Headline, which is going to be right here next to the button. Uh, it's, this is important. So just so again. That's pretty bland. I would not recommend putting that as your headline, but just for the example, for the sake of the uh, video, I just went with that. And description, it's a glitch. It's always been a glitch. It doesn't work. Something's supposed to pop up right here, but it never does. I'm surprised if it does. Let's see. Oh, wow. Look at that. It popped up. So sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So you can put a description there as well. And then you have your call to action buttons, which in this case, I would do download, okay? And and now let's look at the actual form. So what happens when they click that download button? What's that gonna look like? What's well, gonna look like something like this? So we wanna create a new one and we're gonna name it my fitness coach test. Let's go with more volume in this case because we want as many people as possible to download this and make it really easy for them. Intro, you can upload a background if you want. I usually don't, I just leave it like this. Headline text, maybe like, enjoy my freebie. 
and you can add stuff here if you want. I really, I really make it quick and easy for the person. Email, full name, and Facebook. The reason why I really like lead forms is because Facebook will a lot of times autofill this, which is really user friendly and helps us because more people will submit our form and get into our funnel. So I'm fine with just name and email in this case. And description, what you're going to have to do here is just put, please provide the information info below so we know and your free download giving some sort of reason why we're collecting their contact information privacy policy it is very important that you grab your privacy link and add it here if you don't that can reject your ad it's really important that you do this right. not worried about disclaimers and that's it this is the thank you page you'll see and maybe we put like thanks you're all set go check your inbox your preview so there we go. And then I, then right here, what you could do is say view website. Maybe you want to send traffic to your website after they submit it just to check you out more. Right? So there we go. That's, that is your lead form. Very easy, straightforward. Now, obviously on the back end, as I mentioned earlier in the video, make sure you connect Zapier. That way, whenever they do actually submit the form, Zapier can email over the PDF, the free download to them, and it's all set. And you're good to go. And obviously, if you're looking for assistance on that, if you need help setting that up, you can schedule a free consultation or you can comment below and I can help walk you through it. So there we go. That's our form we're going to use. We'll click public. All right. So now that looks good. Ad number one for audience one is good to go. And what we're actually going to do is repeat that step for each audience that we did. Same concept, right? You're going to upload the photo, write a very similar, write a very similar caption, because again, you want to eliminate the variables, keep the copy pretty generic across the board. You don't want one to be really strong, really pushy and the other one a little, little more passive, right? So keep the copy in hooks and headlines, pretty similar across the board. Lead form is going to be the same. And after you create it, you can actually, it'll, it's easy drop down for each one. You, you'll be able to just add them right there and again that so there we go we mapped out our top of funnel and what we're going to do now is we're going to create our middle of funnel so going back to our diagram here middle funnel is our recorded webinar sign up our objective is conversions so it's going to be here we're going to go leads continue MOF, just, and our audience that we're retargeting are actually people who downloaded, downloaded TV. So what we're going to be doing now is creating a, creating a custom audience. And now in this case, keep in mind, we are sending traffic to a landing page that is getting people to sign up for our top of the hour automated recorded webinar. So we'll have a website in place and we'll die. We'll have to install our pixel, which again, I'm going to save that for another video because that this video is already as long as it is. So in this case, let's just say we have a webinar software. We've created a landing page. We've created an opt-in page. We have our pixel installed, which a lot of the softwares are, they integrate with Facebook. So it should be an easy click. Now going down here, same thing. We may set our budget to after four days. Our top sticking to our plan after four days of running that top of funnel, we'll put our budget at 20% of our total budget, whatever that may be. And so, what we're going to have to do now is create a custom audience and who in the lead form, anyone who has opened and submitted the OFC test lead form in the past, the past 14 days. And what that retention is, is saying what Facebook's going to do as this thing continues to run months and months and months, it'll just take the people from the last 14 days who have opened your lead form and target those people. So I like to, I like to do a 14 day window audience name, give it a name, download a freebie. And I'm going to create this audience done. There we go. That's all. That's the only audience I'm retargeting in this middle of funnel. And same process here, what you're going to do is obviously go back into Canva. You're going to create a new ad that is more designed to drive traffic to your 
to your middle of funnel webinar sign up like sign up for my webinar talking about postpartum women whatever whatever it may be right so again do your due diligence go to the ads library get some inspiration go over to canva create your ad download it same process that's your middle of funnel now let's go back out here okay so we got top funnel middle funnel now let's go ahead and set up our bottom of funnel here so so in this case it depends on your sales process if you are needing people to book a call with you before they can purchase your program or if they can just purchase it right on the spot however that may be let's say in this case we want people to book a call with us okay that they have to book a call first before they can purchase our program All right so we'll do another lead ad very similar to middle of funnel we're going to be driving traffic driving traffic to to a website to your calendar right to your scheduling tool and we are retargeting people who signed up for the webinar and the audience again same thing we did in middle of funnel we're gonna have to create a look a custom audience here so we're creating people who went to who signed up for our webinar and that would be inside the website and again we don't have our pixel set up so we can't retarget the people who have converted from middle of funnel but again like i said if you want that extra help feel free to comment below or of course book a call with us and we can get you set up and rocking with this strategy so that's how we would set up our bottom of funnel with again same thing create the ad that is specific and appropriate for the bottom of funnel and we're sticking to our plan here right our we have two campaigns going we got our conversions sending people to the booking page and we also have messenger so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this bottom of funnel campaign here and I'm going to call it, I'm going to rename it messenger. Maybe my conversions are better with messenger objectives. Maybe people really want to talk to us. So when you go to the ad set level, make sure you click messenger at your budget, scrolling down and audience should be the same considering if we had our pixel installed and create the appropriate ad chat with me now let me answer your questions whatever it may be so there we go that is how we would set up our top funnel middle funnel bottom funnel and of course you could always incorporate the retargeting campaign here as well we just took our funnel outline and implemented it. we went inside the ads manager and built this thing out from scratch, obviously there's a few holes missing as far as having the pixel installed, having the webinar software, landing pages, things like that. But I think this video really got you going in the right direction and was able to give you the right mindset, right approach and how to set this thing up and implement an in-depth Facebook ad strategy if you're an online fitness coach. All right, and there you have it. If you're an online fitness coach, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you did, you can show your support by liking and subscribing to our YouTube channel. And also, if you want to dive in and go into more details, or if you're looking for a little bit more help on setting up as far as landing pages, the pixel, as I mentioned in the video, right, we weren't able to show that. Feel free to schedule a consultation call. I'd love to hop on and get you set up and rocking with this strategy. I believe in it. I think it's a great strategy for online fitness coaches. And on top of that, don't forget to download the free funnel outline for you to use to help guide you if you do plan on implementing this strategy. So with that said, that is our niche of the week. I hope you've really enjoyed it. Best of luck.